And you're watching Roots TV Nigeria. The killings across the country is the thrust of our conversation today. A lot has been happening, especially in the northeast. The police has launched an operation, Puff Ada. That didn't seem to be enough for the president, who has called on all security chiefs to go out and stop these killings. Now, over 30,000 people have been killed in Zamfara State. These killings have gone through other states, courtism in rivers. There's just one form of bloodshed or another across the country. Now, we'll also have a conversation is a senator from Kaduna State. Now, we're talking about Kaduna because the recent killings in Kajuru and reprisals and constant bandit attack in that community is caused for an alarm. With me in this exclusive interview is the senator representing Kaduna South, Senator Danjumala. You're welcome, sir. Thank you very much. Now, quickly, the, the, the president has called on all security chiefs, you know, to go out and do this. Some has seen this as a little too late. After all these killings have happened, do you share the same point of view? Certainly, I'm sharing the same point of view because I was the first person that shouted on this killing in the chamber when I was making point of how my people were being maltreated by the bandits and how many of them were being killed, burn all their houses, pack all their crops, sheep, and what have you. And I was making this point to the people in the National Assembly, that is during the, the plenary. I shouted and I was calling all people to sit up to this petition. I did mention that this is not just Fulanis, but these are Boko Haram. I did mention that to the whole world to know that one should not look at it as this is happening to Fulani, no. It was a Boko Haram that is penetrating the whole country. And if care is not taken, there will be a time will come that they will not be able to handle the situation. And here it comes. And some of my colleagues were making fun of me by calling me names that Fulani, Fulani man. So the Fulani has come and passed. Now we are talking of Tories, we are talking of bandits, and we are talking of Boko Haram. But short name to use on all these things is Boko Haram all over. No, it is quite funny that you made mention of the fact that it's Boko Haram. A lot of people have even categorized Boko Haram as a political set. Do you see that? Or do you think they are just some, you know, people that are working on their own? Do you think Boko Haram is actually political, uh, politicized? It's just not the truth. It's not the truth as per se. It is just not the truth. They are running away from the reality. These bandits are all over. And mostly these guys are not from Nigeria. And I am telling you this thing. People don't want to say the truth, and you will not hear the truth from me, but they know who are the people in charge for bringing all these guys in. Now, the situation in Kaduna, especially Kajuru, has been that of, you know, reprisals and back and forth. So you were saying that these are Boko Haram members that are doing these killings back and forth, and it is not bandits, as has been reported? The bandits and the Boko Haram are more or really less the same. They share the same name. It is just because maybe through their operations they are having different kind of things and somebody can use the name to qualify them that these people could be bandits or these people could be Boko Haram. What is Boko Haram per se? Boko Haram doesn't choose whoever you be, either you're a Christian or Muslim. And the same thing, the bandits are people that are, you know that can come and seize all your cow and whatever and get away with them without even trace. They go moving from one village to the other, making sure that at least anybody they come across him, they either kill you or they do away with their cattles and walk away. So we have a lot of things to do. It is just unfortunate that the federal government could not go into this earlier. Maybe I couldn't just say, or I cannot just say what actually led to this. They were taking this as a job. Now the reality has come. And it will be very, very difficult for them to tackle this at the right time. But if they could do their best, maybe it will be a story to forget or to just to tell. But I am assuring you, many people know those that are doing all this. Now that we you not hear it from my mouth. Hmm. Now that we've established, but, but, but why these people that you, you're talking about that know, that is my point, that this is being politicized. Why? They should come out. The reality should be told. For those that are behind all this killing, they should make sure they are taking innocent people into book. Imagine all the people from this Kujama 
packing all innocent to go and lock them without checking the truth. Now, who has more to gain from these killings? Who has more to gain? The innocent ones are at the receiving end. You don't know anything, they will just come and pick you. Maybe if somebody comes out to defend himself, they will say, why should you go out to defend yourself? You'll be sleeping in your room, somebody will come and kill you. <laughs> Which is not fair. These people are not Nigerians. The only way to tackle this thing is to come out in force, to protect and defend the mechanism of the whole country, both in and out, to make sure that they checkmate all the happiness, both day and night. Irrespective of whoever should be held responsible, but they should not victimize anybody. They should not victimize anybody that who is innocent. Okay, now we've established that the you know order coming from the president is a little bit too late. Now let's talk about the security chiefs that are supposed to be proactive and be in charge of the security of the country. Now there's been a hashtag trend in you know ministers Buari Shusak and then him reshuffling his cabinet ahead of you know the next level. Do you agree that the security chiefs have done so much and it's time for them to retire? Well, as a matter of fact. We ever serve or work in the government, you have a period of time given to you, no matter how good you are. You have a particular years you must put in place after attaining those age. Right now, no matter how good you are, you must be retired. Irrespective of whoever, as long as you have gotten to those numbers of years that you are supposed to put into service, once the time comes, you are bound to go. Now, talking about tenor, how about performance? If, if you have not completed your tenor and you're not performing, shouldn't you still go? There is even no uh, tenor. Tenor is only when you've not met up with the age you are supposed to put into the service. No matter how good you are, why should not just keep you? There are thousand and one that are queuing up to be more than what you are. Everybody wants to answer the name of Chief of Army Staff or chief defense or whatever. But many people that have the zeal that are professional built up could not give the, could not be given that right to to, 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 to to reach that opportunity. Some they cut them young by retiring them. Those that have the guts to do whatever they think they can do for the country, they don't give them that pro pro professional right. So are you trying to say that we are playing politics with the security of Nigeria? Certainly. No doubt about that. It's very true. They are playing politics into it. Now, looking at the, you know, going forward, the security chiefs are not going to be sacked anytime soon. They have, the police have brought on Operation Puff Ada, you know, trying to, what do you, you have said the president sending security chief at this time is a little bit too late. What next? What is the way forward? There must be some sort of a remedy. We need some sort of sukkah to hold on to and say there is hope. Are we saying that there is no hope to the insecurity that is facing the country right now? There is hope. I am a security of myself, to myself and to my family. The president is a security, is a chief security of the whole country. He's supposed to know what to do at when due. I stand here to tell what affects my people and my family, my only constituency and my state. My concern is the president knows what to do at when due. Talking about at when due, the president was just recently accused of being a Baba Goslu. That, if I understand you correctly, you subscribe to that assertion too. Well. Uh, somebody that takes his time to do work at when we is called the call him Baba Goslo. But know that he's not efficient. He could be very, very He's efficient despite the security situation we're talking but, about. But, but before, because of Goslo, so that he takes his time to before taking decisions, that's why they call him Baba Goslo. To the detriment of Nigerians? Well, that might be, but at least we don't, he doesn't look at it that way. But actually, he's executing all his work that he's supposed to do at the right time. All right, now, thank you very much. And that is where we're going to drop it. You. you have been listening to the senator representing Kaduna South.
Danjuma la. Like you've you've heard, you've listened. You see that most of all these killings that have been happening are politicized. The president has been accused of be being go slow. He's slow to action. I, you know, I must say all of this that has been happening. What is the way forward? What hope is out there for those families? What hope is out there for the victims? Ten billionaire was just recently approved by the Senate. You know. Subject to the approval by the federal government for the victims in Zamfara, is 10 billion naira enough? Can 10 billion naira bring back these lives? A lot more of the insecurity situation is appalling. Stay on Roots TV as we begin to dissect each of these states where there's unfortunate incidents is happening and bring you the updates. I am Aisha Jibrin. <laughs>